Hello and welcome. We're going to learn how to control uh, elements in an Unreal Engine scene with Blueprint and Metasounds. So piping audio out of Metasounds and controlling some lights to make this uh, cool thunder scene. So uh, this could be used in a whole bunch of different areas, but you'll see here this little flashing light, which looks really nice. Uh, and it's something that you could control any number of components with. Uh, with some pretty basic blueprinting. So if you're looking into blueprinting or connecting Metasounds logic with a game, this is the video for you. The component itself, I've just made this little audio light link. Now uh, you could uh, make a base version of this, but it's basically a blueprint actor component. So if you hit add and we make a new blueprint component, uh, that's how we'll get to that. So I'll open the inside of this. Uh, you don't need many components here. So you need an attenuation just for the sake of making it local and sound nice. Uh, you need the blueprint actor component itself, which is the thing that will go onto uh, one of your elements. Uh, in, in my instance, it's a light source, but uh, it's just what I've connected it to this time. You'll need a sound to play and you'll need uh, a meta sound to use that to play. The meta sound itself, uh, you can see is one of the best bits of this whole system is how simple it is. Uh, we have a wave asset that we use to play um, and we set that to loop and we have, uh, it's just a stereo asset, but do whatever you want with it. And we use an envelope follower. Uh, this is just to put a little bit of lag time on the envelope itself. Uh, you don't have to use an envelope follower, but it'll be really jittery. Uh, and I wanted to kind of mimic the thunderstorm uh, side of this to have it, uh, yeah, just a, a little bit more, uh, a little bit smoother, I suppose. And from there, we're piping out to uh, a variable, which I'm just calling envelope out. Uh, if you drag off of any Metasound version, you can promote it to a graph output. Uh, you could do this for audio, like we have for the actual left and right channels of audio, or you could do it for uh, any variable or Boolean that you're using. Um, you notice I don't even have to use a trigger here because as a sort of buffer system, it's going to grab each of the uh, outputs and every time it sends a buffer out, uh, we're going to get this averaged version. Now I just kind of take the left and right sides, halve them and add them together just so that if uh, the left side had much more variance than the right side, uh, it would still sound okay, but uh, you could get more fancy with this as well. The blueprint itself uh, is, is pretty easy to understand. You do need a few variables. Uh, the variables I'm using is this light component. Uh, now the light component is so that I have a light source, uh, which I already know is on the object, uh, but you could swap this out for anything. You could change this to materials. You could change this to Niagara systems or do whatever you want. Need a Metasound source itself. So I could put this same component on a different light, which we might do right at the end to show you how it works. Uh, we need a target, which will be the actor. This is to say where to play the sound and where to get the light component from. Uh, the way the referencing kind of works in Unreal, we're going to go onto the actor component, the, the parent, and kind of look through that to find the uh, light source itself for the component we're looking for. Now I've got an attenuation setting just so it's usable in different instances. Uh, you don't have to use this or you could put it on Metasound itself. Uh, we have this output name, which I didn't end up using because I ended up hard coding it, but you could have this so that if you wanted to have different output names for different sources uh, so that you knew which which version of uh, Metasound was outputting what, you could do that here. And we have this intensity multiplier. This was to crank up or down the light source itself uh, so that you know it's unlikely that you're going to be able to set up one variable and have that one variable control with a, with a good enough level of variance uh, every instance of, of behavior that you want. So, you know, some lights I might want really bright because they're outside. Some lights I might want darker because they're inside and I'm just gonna like flash the window and I want that a little bit less, uh, I want it still reacting to the thunder, but maybe not as intense. Uh, then we have this uh, initialized Boolean. This is a little dirty flag to let me know uh, if things were set up correctly. Now, as much as I would love to say that everything's always set up correctly, it's often wrong uh, because reasons. To begin with, uh, we're gonna line up this uh, spawn sound at location. Now, uh, you could just have a 2D sound source here and bypass this whole thing, but I wanted to show you what it might look like to have specific, uh, specific sound sources react to themselves uh, so that you could change this onto multiple sources. But again, you could have one thunder source and then parent that and change that up as well. We're going to use the meta sound to connect up to that sound. So that's the one that's playing. And then we're going to get the actor location from that target. So in this instance, I'll point the target to that parent uh, actor component, then say, where am I in the world? So that I'll play it in the correct spot. 
Uh, from there, we have the attenuation settings, which I talked about a little bit before, just so that we could walk up into it. Uh, after we have made a sound, we want to set up the light component itself. Now, uh, the way the referencing works for this, as much as I would love to just drag it in, it's kind of easier to go through the parent hierarchy. So we grab the target and we get component by class. This is saying, given a class, find that component within that, which we're gonna look for this uh, light component. Um, then we're gonna check if we found a light component. And if we did set it up, uh, so set the variable so that we'll address it later. And if we didn't turn the ticking off uh, so we don't end up running the ticking on elements that don't work and set our initialized flag uh, to the result, whether it's valid or not. Um, there is every chance that you search through a uh, component tree and just don't find uh, what you're looking for. And you know, you should be prepared for that. Inside this, we're going to do this on tick. Now, be careful about everything on tick in Blueprints, but as a simple enough system, you could turn this off at different distances and the lighting and partitioning might even handle that for you anyway. Uh, to listen to outputs, the secret subsystem node thing you're looking for is this Metasound output subsystem. Uh, so if we look for Metasound output, you'll see there's a call function for it, but we don't have anything like that. So we're going to look for the subsystem. And this is like a, an, a, a ticking clocker that kind of controls some of the functionality that's happening behind the scenes. Um, often it's one of the elements that people forget about is the subsystem component. And they're sitting there connecting up their target and wondering why it doesn't already start. So the output, uh, given that we can actually see here, the target is already set to this Metasound output subsystem. Um, and we've set the audio component. This is the Metasounds whose output we're going to watch uh, to be that spawn sound, uh, because we do need like an instance of that spawn sound to listen to. From there, there's a little event that says when the output value changes. Now we're gonna change our output value a lot, uh, but we're gonna check that we're testing it not as often. Uh, it's going to output uh, a variable here and we've actually set our output name to be this audio out, which was the name of the Metasound output variable. From there, we're just going to check that the watch was successful. Again, this is just some error checking to say, hey, dude, did I actually find the variable called audio out? If I didn't find it called audio out, maybe stop, right? And if we did find it, try and get it. Uh, and we already know it's a float, but in this instance, and float being the number itself, uh, you could pass all number of all, all sorts of different data types out here um, from vectors to audio buffers to uh, Boolean flags and things like that. If you wanted, you know, once the volume hits a certain level, then you react to it, something like that. If we could successfully get the float, and again, I just want to check that we could get it first because for whatever reason, if we didn't get it, um, we probably shouldn't be here at this point, but it happens, right? And if we could, we want to set the intensity on the light. Um, you actually see if I go set, you know, I could set the light color or the the channels or the shadowing or really anything. Um, it'll be anything public on the component itself. And so hopefully this gives you some cool ideas about how you might connect it up uh, in your game to any number of components or your other scripts or variables. Finally, we just uh, multiply the value that we got out of the Metasound system by uh, an intensity multiplier. This is just to brighten it up or dampen it down, as I said before, and set the light intensity. So the area of using this uh, would be to navigate around, find, uh, find an object. So if I go past this, oh, that's the one we're actually already using, right? So I have this point light. If I unlock my point light, and I kind of click back onto it. I can add audio light link. Okay, it's gonna ask for a meta sound. I only have one. It's gonna ask for a target. Uh, we're going to look for point light 26, which is very catchy name. Uh, the parents must be very proud. And we're looking for the attenuation with the audio out. Okay, uh, the intensity multiplier. I'm just gonna set this to like a thousand for the sake of it, um, we're gonna hit play and we should see, let me get in here and the, there we go. All right, so there's like a decent amount of brightness there uh, and it reacts to the thunder. Now we could add this to the sky, we could change uh, all manner of components and I encourage you to look further into this, uh, but it is a very quick way of connecting audio with Blueprint, uh, Metasound specifically with Blueprint and uh, I hope you use it in the future.